Let me share with you a scrap of time that is immeasurable. A borrowed line from the movie Spring 1941. And thank you in advance for your time that is immeasurable as well. I am doing this presentation to find or create alliances with people like you toward a stronger voice for the First Nations through an open science research communication framework. My name is Myreen Magabo. I am a doctoral student of communication at the University of the Philippines Open University and currently an associate faculty at the University of Phoenix. I will briefly provide the rationale, the goals and objectives of the framework and discuss the proposed framework and through a continuing dialogue, the enrichment of the framework can be done. So first, let me go over the rationale, the goals and objectives of the framework. I have three major points for the rationale of the framework. Foremost, this proposed framework is in conformity with ICA's mission and objectives of providing an international forum facilitating inclusiveness and conversations among scholars, including the First Nations scholars promoting a wider public engagement through quality communication scholarships, research, collaboration, and publication. This open science communication research framework gives prominence to the definition of communication, which is to commune, to unite, to converge, and attain mutual understanding among the global members of ICA. And that can extend to the entire global community or society. If adopted, the framework can be a legacy that could help generate evolving knowledge and understanding of the voices of the First Nations through the representative scholars who take part in the annual and regional ICA events. Now for the goals and objectives of the framework. The goal is to establish a stronger voice for the First Nations through the presentation of their own narratives collected from their own voices or perspectives. There are three key objectives for this proposed framework. The first is to enhance engagement and representations from the First Nation scholars. The second one is to hear and listen to the voices of the First Nations people through their own narratives and perspectives. And to me, this is the most important objective. Third, is to build upon and strengthen those existing works that have been done on the First Nations people, and mostly they are from the third-person voice or point of view. There are three key objectives for this proposed. So now let's talk about the proposed framework, which is an open science communication research framework. This Open Science Communication Research Framework has five components. One of the components is for the researcher to understand, to gather narratives 
from the First Nations people. The second component is asking questions and identifying the right questions to be asked. So what the researcher can do is, based on whatever information regarding the First Nations people, develop those questions. What else do we need to know from the First Nations? The th next component would be that exploration, participants' exploration or researchers' exploration and evaluation of their own ideas and beliefs versus those of the First Nations people. The next component would be the participants exploring and evaluating not just their own ideas and beliefs versus those of the First Nations, but in consideration of the global system, of the entire system. And then the fifth component is summarizing, integrating, analyzing, and generating new knowledge from the outcomes of the conversation among the researchers and the First Nations people. The outcomes can then be shared through presentations and finally through publication. This framework is grounded on the dialogue theory, the narrative inquiry, and the systems theory. Peter Garrett explains profoundly what dialogue theory is. Dialogue involves an ethical stance. It requires respect amid curiosity. It requires listening to what is being said, even if it challenges one's own beliefs and assumptions. It requires suspension of judgment, withholding of biases, and that can result in authenticity of voice. The dialogue theory is based on the ontology or nature of reality that things are already interconnected. And to act as if this were not the case results in fragmentation. Dialogue theory asserts that there is a way of thinking together to encourage participation, to enhance awareness of what is happening. Dialogue reveals how things already hold together in a common purpose. Dialogue is talking and thinking together to arrive at a common meaning through conversations among a group of people. And that will bring us to the convergence theory. The dialogue theory has that final component, which is convergence, arriving at common meanings or mutual understanding. Creswell's classical narrative applies well to this framework. By listening to the narratives, scholars can gain better understanding of the First Nations their perceptions about their lived experiences, their feelings, their beliefs, and perspectives. And by documenting the First Nations narratives, scholars can help empower and strengthen the First Nations voices. As an interdisciplinary approach, systems theory is definitely operant within the framework 
as the First Nations voices are taken as part of the entire global or universal system. I also would like to note that each system is enclosed by space and time. It is impacted by its environment. It can be defined by its structure and purpose. Its meaning is conveyed through its performances, role, or functions. Systems theory is absolutely within the framework of systems thinking. As noted in the work of Dr. Lex Librero of the University of the Philippines, systems thinking is a powerful perspective. It helps in exploring the interdependencies among the elements of a system. In quoting Pegasus Communication, Librero notes that it provides a set of tools for resolving persistent problems. Also quoting Linus, it encourages individuals to step back and see the whole picture and not just parts of it. For the third and final point of my presentation, this will be a continuing work, the enrichment of the framework through our open dialogues. Before I finally conclude this presentation, let me just share some reflective thoughts or questions. We can see feature articles or works that describe the First Nations people, their plight, their contributions to society, their struggles, but we hear those stories from the third person point of view. What about hearing their stories from their own voices? What are their folklores related or narrated in their own language? What are their own perspectives? Do they feel marginalized? Did they choose to simply flee to the mountains? What do they say really happened to them throughout history? What are their own ancestral stories handed down from generation to generation. Before I finally conclude this presentation, let me just share some reflective thoughts or questions. We can see feature articles or works that describe the First Nations people, their plight, their contributions to society, their struggles, but we hear those stories from the third person point of view. What about hearing their stories from their own voices? What are their folklores related or narrated in their own language? And now for my concluding thoughts. Narratives contain the fragments of time which can be immensely beyond measure. When we hear or read narratives from the first-person voice, that is how immeasurable and valuable the stories are. Here are my references. 